Welcome back to Bus Brothers. I'm still Tom. This is video two in our T5, T6 basic story. We're going to presume at this point that you've watched the first video and you've now bought the van that you wanted. You've got home and you've decided that now you want to start making it into your own thing. Good thing with these vans, there are tons and tons and tons of stuff you can do to them. This video, we're going to focus on exterior modifications. We're going to cover off your bodywork side suspension your wheels and a couple other little bits and then in future videos we're going to start looking at what you can do to the inside to make it more usable for you styling or style is very subjective what i may like isn't what you like and i will try and keep this video as factual as i can for as long as i can so you bought your panel van it's turned up it hasn't got any windows in it you want windows in it what do you do you can go on the internet, go to places like Camper Glass, and buy all of your windows for all of your panels. When they get delivered, it's just a case of cutting out the metalwork and the frame inside. There's loads of videos on YouTube that will show you how to do that, and then bonding the glass in over the top. I've had a go. It didn't come out as well as I wanted to. And on this one, when I put windows in this one, I paid someone to do it. It's a lot cheaper. And the end of the day, it's their problem if they get it wrong. So your van turned up hasn't got color coded bumpers and that's what you really want you've got three options one realize that commercial bumpers are better like i do two you can take your commercial bumpers work your way through sandpaper rub the texture off high build primer rub it back primer paint it or you can buy pre-primed bumpers aftermarket versions off the internet for not a lot of money save yourself a lot of effort if you're going to get a body shop to do it ultimately that will work out cheap because there's less labor involved You've got your bumpers on. Now what do you want to do? Standard bumper looks the same as any other bumper. So you can start adding things to it. So you can buy splitters and add-ons. Splitters sit at the bottom of your bumper. And then you get things like DRLs, which are your little LED lights. Most common option people go for is the factory sort of sport line add-on. You can buy them off the internet relatively cheaply. It's always better to go for a GRP plastic one as opposed to fiberglass. because They're a little bit stronger. Get things like side skirts and sidebars to make it look lower at the side. You can get rear bumper add-ons. You can get a spoiler that goes on the back to make it look more sporty. But ultimately, the choice is yours. There is a limit. You can get splitters on splitters and spoilers for your spoilers, which sometimes less is more. Next thing, if you're considering it, is a fake lift. As we discussed in video one, you can add various parts from newer models to an older van to make it look newer. Question is, one, is it because you wanted one that looks newer because you like the look of it, in which case crack on. If you're looking at it in the point that you need to have the latest and greatest, well, my opinion, and now I said I wouldn't get into it, is that you need to reconsider your options. You can make an older van look cool. You don't need to have the latest and greatest. It's not all about willy waving on the internet. If you decide you want to do a fake lift, there's options for you. You can buy a kit which gives you everything that you need, but you will pay a premium for it. People like Travelling Light offer these off the shelves to convert your T5 to a 5.1, to a 6, to a 6.1. Or you can take longer to do it, source the bits individually off Facebook Marketplace, eBay, etc. Things to remember, T5 to T5.1, it's just headlights, bonnet, bumper. The minute you start going beyond that, you need new wings, which when you get down to it, once you started painting a bumper, bonnet, wings, you verge on the territory of full respray. The spectrum of resprays is huge. You've got Fred in the shed down the road, who's the king of orange peel, who at night from 20 feet away, one eye closed, will look all right. Or you've got the big boys that turn out some properly good work, such as hybrid paintworks or paintworks up in Loughborough, but you are going to pay a premium for someone that does a good job. You've got options. You can go for the same colour as you've got now, which is basically also known as a blowover. Just freshens up your existing paintwork, gives you the chance to remove any wear and tear. You can then go into colour change. So you can go for a full colour change. You can choose any colour of any vehicle. You can make a colour up if you want. You can do that and not do door jams. But if you're going to do it properly, it needs to be doors off. Do all your door jams. So when you open the door, you see the right colour. Paint jobs are expensive. No two ways around it. The key to a good paint job is prep. Prep takes time. Time is money. Good prep costs money. Good paint costs money. So 
if you get offered a paint job that let's say is less than two and a half grand, going to be Fred in the shed, the old king of orange peel. Anyone else doing it, anywhere between three and a half to six thousand pounds. Like I say, it's a big investment. Another option you've got, obviously, we're on YouTube. What does YouTube love? Wrapping your van. You can wrap your van. You can take it to someone to wrap your van. It's not a difficult process, but it's a difficult process to get right. In short, what you do is cover your van and a big sticker. The advantage of a wrap over paint is price. Wraps tend to come in at between 1,500 quid for a lower half wrap to three, three and a half grand for a full wrap, depending on who does it. You could do it yourself. There are people out there that have done it themselves. There's videos on YouTube. Essentially, it's not difficult to wrap a van. It is difficult to do a good job. And that's where the difference lies. On top of being cheaper is changeability. You can peel it off. You can stick another one on. You can keep your van underneath. It's up to you whether you think it's better than paint. In my eyes, as much as people tell you that a wrap can look like paint, it never does. It's never got the depth of a good quality paint job. But I'd rather take a good wrap over cheap paint so you've got your van looking pretty you've got some big wheels on it which we'll go on to in a minute you step back and realize that swampy and his eco warrior mates have started squatting in your arch gaps because they're that big these vans from factory ride high they're commercial vehicles but it's always cool to lower them you've got several options and we're going to run through them in order one you've got lowering springs cheapest option probably going to run you less than a couple of hundred quid you can change the spring on your stock suspension to reduce the ride height. The only downfall is that you're limited on how low you can go. And second of all, if your factory shock absorbers have done 200,000 miles, they ain't going to last. <laughs> Putting lowering springs on them increases the amount of wear on them. And if they're worn out, chuck them in a bin, get some new ones. Number two, coil overs. Probably the most popular modification for suspension on these vans. Gives you the ability to wind the perch that the spring sits on up and down. You can bust your C-spanner out, wind it up to give you more space, or wind it all the way down to make it look cool. Reality is, myself included, most people get coilovers, wind them down, chuck the spanners away and never adjust them. Coilovers come in various different stages. You've got your Billy Basic budget ones, like Johns, Pro Lines. They're going to get you low. But they are going to smash you about like a beard up two can van down. Next up, you've got Van Slams, Stance Plus Pros, Bluebirds, that sort of 450 to 650 pound mark. You're going to get a bit more adjustability, you're going to get a better ride, and they're probably going to last a little bit longer. Most people go for that range. And then you've got your big boys, your 2,000 pound damper adjustable all singing, all dancing, race spec suspension. Now, some people will say that you notice the difference. The reality is, it ain't a Porsche GT3. It's a diesel van. This one has got H&R Deeps on it. I didn't buy them new. I bought them secondhand, but new. They retail at £1,700. They don't ride that much different to my 650 quid van slams, in all honesty. Next up in the suspension world is the big boys is air ride now air ride a massive investment in your van unless you're doing it yourself it's going to cost you at least five grand for a good job sometimes even more so what is air ride air ride takes the spring out of your suspension if you think about it this way and replaces it with an airbag you increase the pressure to raise your ride height you decrease the pressure to decrease your ride height it can be very cool it is quite labor intensive and like i say it is a massive investment biggest advantage is the ability to adjust the height of your van as you go so you can lift you can ride around low you can lift it up for speed bumps and also gives you the ability to get more scene points on the internet by posting videos of you airing it out there are some other things you can do with your van with lowering so you can do what's referred to as a hub mod which you'll see a lot of people talk about you can only do it on t28 and t30 spec vans or t32 have got a different hub but essentially you remove a restriction in the hub that allows you to drop the shock through Gains you 25, 30 millimeters. Just depends how close you want to get to your CV boots. Other option you've got is what's called a machined T6 top mount, which is a later model T6 top mount on your suspension that's been machined at. Gains you anywhere between that 7 and 12 mil. You're going to slam your van. There's a few things you need to remember. One, the lower you go, the more pressure you're going to put on your different suspension components. 
you have to start looking into poly bushing some of your bushes. They last a lot longer, they're not as prone to wear. One thing that's definitely worth looking at is the Powerflex adjustable rear bushes. These vans, when you lower them, the tire on the wheels is insane. And if you don't do them, you will eat through tires like a fat ladder and all you can eat buffet. Another thing to remember is the lower you go, the more chance there is of things that shouldn't hit things hitting things, like your drive shaft on your chassis rails. There's ways around this. People like Dropworks, take it to them. They'll do a subframe raise or chop bits out, but you have to be really committed to do that. But if you're going to do it, do it properly because anything less, you're wasting your time and devaluing your van. Before we move on to something else, there is another subculture called Swampers. People that should have bought a Land Rover that didn't. All joking aside, for some people, this lifted up version of a van does the job. If you're into mountain biking and you're off-road all the time, Having one that's stupid low, that's scraping all the time, ain't going to work. Lift it up, get the usability. The one thing I would say is be conscious of height. The higher you go, the less likely you're going to be to get in multi-story car parks, for example, with height restrictions. And two, less is more. You don't need Arctic level suspension and snowboards to go to a bike park in Wales. Next up, you guessed it, wheels. Most of the vans you're going to get out there come with these from factory. 16 inch six and a half inch wide steel wheels and for a van that you're using for work they look all right but the rest of the time they look <sighs> let's get into the legal side of wheels your wheel your alloy wheel or your steel wheel needs to be load rated these vans are heavy if you run a car weight rated wheel on a heavy van you run the risk of that wheel buckling bending bracket same goes for tyres. I'm not going to get into too much detail on these tyres. If you want to go for a lower profile tyre, you're going to have to compromise somewhere. And normally the compromise is weight rating. These fans, a lot of them will need a 101 weight rated tyre. You can't get a low profile 101. So look at it this way. The 101 is based on that van. It is absolute limit of weight with presumably a margin of error. If you want to play the game and you want to go low and you want skinny tyres, you're going to have to pull your big boy pants on and you're going to have to compromise. One key thing that you will need to know if you're going to look at buying wheels for your van is these are your stud holes. There's five of them and they're 120 mil apart. So you need five by 120 fitment wheels. If you get a five by 112 or a four by 100 or a five by 1.14.3, whatever you buy, Unless you buy a 5x120, they ain't going to fit. Yes, you can run adapters, but you start getting into issues with width and offset. 5x120, if you need to know, is a common factory fitment for VW T5 T6s. BMW use a 5x120, as do Land Rover and Range Rover, making them very popular for cheap OEM used wheels. So you've got two options when it comes to wheels. You've got alloy wheels and then steel wheels. Alloy wheels, you've all seen them. I'm not going to belittle you by explaining the difference between an alloy wheel and a steel wheel. Things to know, people tend to go between an 18 inch, which is a factory fit sport line size, up to a 20. The bigger you go, the smaller the tire, the smaller the tire, the harder the ride. You choose your compromises and go from there. The only thing I will say again, remember your load rating. If your tires and your wheels are underrated or rated for a BMW 1 series, they ain't gonna last on a two and a half ton van. The other option you've got is banded steel wheels, which I run them because I love them. Essentially, you find a bigger than factory steel wheel. So one of the options is the VW Amarok pickup truck, which like I say, this is a 16 inch wheel. They come with a similar looking wheel that's 18 inches, but it's a bigger wheel. Banding it essentially means they cut around the wheel, widen it out, and weld a new piece in all the way around. In theory, not a difficult process. Reality is, do you want to drive on something that hasn't been done properly? All of mine come from Jamie at Dutchy Banded Wheels. Put a link below. Like I said, I've never had an issue with his. They are balanced and they run perfectly and I've done tens of thousands of miles on them. The last thing on wheels are some of the technical jargon you will need to learn. Five by 120 is your center on the wheels. You've then got offset, which is how far in or out the arch they sit. You've got width various different things 
one website that is absolutely mustard for helping you figure out what will fit is oddly enough called willtheyfit.com. I'll link it below. Tap the specs of your current setup in there. Tap the specs of what you want to run on there, and it will show you on the screen how much further they'll stick out and in so you can see whether they're going to fit. As we said in episode one, the headlights on these vans are dire. It's like having a couple of candles on the front, unless you've got factory xenons or LEDs. A couple of ways you can improve that. You can buy yourself some higher powered bulbs to go in them. Basically, if you keep your standard headlight, get a bit more light out of it. Option two, which is popular, is to replace your headlamps with aftermarket ones. These give you the ability to run different bulbs, such as LEDs or HIDs in a projector housing. It's a grey area. They're not technically legal, but you will pass an MOT. But just be wary of what you're doing. Don't blind people. You can get these aftermarket headlights in OEM, looking quite subtle ones to disco, stew, plastic, fantastic, you name it, DRLs, LEDs. At the end of the day, it's up to you what you want to do on it. Same goes for rear lights. You can change the rear lights on these vans to chop and change between models. Like I said, Katie Price of vans. Look on eBay. There's plenty of options out there. So the next thing is something that doesn't really fit into exterior mob, doesn't really fit anywhere else, and that is remaps. There isn't enough market for performance to do a complete video on it. And yes, internet trolls, there are people that do big turbos and 450 brake horsepower TSIs and put an RS4 engine in there. But this is a basic video, so we're going to stick with the one thing that makes the biggest difference, and that's a remap. A remap, in the simplest terms, is reprogramming the computer your van. Someone that knows what they're doing can go in and they can adjust how much power your van will produce. Now you can get people that will turn up to your house and do it on a laptop, or you can go to someone with a rolling road, which is what I would prefer to do, where you can see, one, your engine's healthy to begin with, and two, see what you're getting for your money. My red one, again, we'll do a feature on it in the next couple of weeks. I took that van to one of my old friends, Chris, a performance remap in Gloucester, and that van was an 84 brake horsepower van, and with all of the kit that he's got, we got 164 brake horsepower out of it. The one caveat on remaps is your torque levels. If you go over 360 newton meters of torque, you can blow a five-speed gearbox. They don't like it. A good remapper will know this, and they will cap it so that your engine is safe. By going from 84 brake horsepower to 164, the drivability increased massively. Before, I was being overtaken by mobility scooters, and now it will cruise on a motorway, up a slope, fully loaded, without any issue. So I said I wouldn't bring my opinion into it, but I lied. I kept it to the end, a bit like Jerry's final thought. With these vans, you can do a lot to them. That doesn't mean you need to do everything. Everyone's got their own personal taste. What I like may not be what you like. I like things subtle, OEM plus, and some people would say boring. Other people like to cover their van in VW stickers in case they forget what they're driving. What I would say from someone that's starting out is look at lots and lots and lots and lots of different Instagram, Facebook, YouTube accounts. Find what you like. Don't just throw and hope it sticks. You end up with something that's confused and doesn't necessarily reflect who you are. You don't need to go on eBay and buy the first five things that come up sorted by price. Take your time, work out what you're going to use your van for. There's no point slamming it if you're going to take it to a bike park. Equally, there's no point jacking it up in the air doing a swamper if you live in the middle of a city centre and you won't be able to park it anywhere. It's your van, it's your choice. Make your own decisions. Finally, if you go on Facebook and say, I've just bought a white van, show me yours, people are going to call you a <laughs> but quite rightly so. Anyway, enough from me. That's this one done. Episode three is going to cover your interior modifications. So generic YouTube time, like, share, subscribe. Most importantly of all, say hello to your mum for me.